Hey, Steve, how you doing? Good, thanks. You guys doing all right? Doing well. Appreciate it. Hey, uh, how have you guys practiced these last few days? Uh, not too bad. Not bad. Uh, fighting a few little bumps and bruises, but uh, attitudes are good. You know, guys, guys know that we did some things better on the weekend, and we're just trying to build on that. Uh, we know we got a great opponent coming up, just like we did last weekend, but uh, it's been pretty good. That was a pretty uh, hard-fought split you guys had against North Texas. What does it say about your team to be able to bounce back from a really, really tough game Friday and then come out with the win on Saturday? Well, hopefully it's something we can build on. You know, we, we felt like we were making some progress. Um, the, Rice, the Rice weekend knocked us back on our heels a little bit. We bounced back from that. Played better, I think, on Friday than we had been in, in most of our games as well. And even though we weren't able to get that win, there were some things that we felt good about uh, in that one. There was a stretch there defensively at the end of that game on Friday where we got uh, several stops, took a couple charges uh, down the stretch, gave ourselves a chance, just didn't get it done on the offensive end during that stretch. The next night, um, we were able to convert at a much higher rate down the stretch offensively, got some better shots. Uh, hung on defensively. They didn't get many field goals in the last uh, three or four minutes. They got some free throws, but not many field goals down the stretch. So, like the way we stayed together, again, liked what we did on the offensive end to, to put ourselves – we put ourselves in a position to win, and then what we did with those possessions down the stretch allowed us to uh, pop it open and hang on. So, uh, a lot, lot of positives there in that regard. Well, what do you guys have to do to be successful against Louisiana Tech? What are some of the things you guys are game planning for? Well, there was a huge emphasis with North Texas on, the, on their interior. That was one portion of what they do well. They do a lot of things well. La Tech is similar. They've got two big guys that uh, will require a lot of attention, more, more high-low, down-the-gut type action, uh, ceiling, getting position early. Uh, so it's a little different type of coverage, a different type of concern, but, but equally as important. So we're spending a lot of time talking about that. Uh, and then and – then, They've got such a great mix of, of players that, that shoot it and drive it. You know, not not guys shooting 50% from the three-point line, but a whole bunch of guys shooting 30s and 35. And, and so you got to honor them at the three-point line, but yet they're good athletes. They can drive it as well. Uh, they've got, got good depth at each position. So there, there's a lot of concerns. Um, we gotta, we got to work like crazy defensively. we got to take keep their big guys from, from getting easy baskets, which is tough to do because they're good at it. Um, and then and they're a really solid defensive team. They don't get broken down. They've got good length on the perimeter. Uh, they're, they're really solid. They, 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 they don't give you anything easy. So uh, we've got to continue to find a way to, even though our numbers, efficiency numbers are pretty good offensively, it, still there's times when uh, we just don't get enough easy shots. Even down the stretch of North Texas, uh, you know, a couple of those shots that Keaton and Javon hit were just because of their elite talent. Uh, we need more possessions like we had there when, when Zoom Bell skips it to Juice and Juice drives it and dishes it to Jacob and just make good basketball plays. Uh, we need to get Keaton more shots where he's just stepping into rhythm three-pointers rather than having to come off hard, shooting over length. So still trying to, trying to uh, grasp and execute what, what, what a, good, a good offensive possession looks like. It's been a small sample size, but you haven't had much success on the road this season. You pretty close against Rice. Do you feel like that's a monkey on your back, or has that just been a small sample size? Uh, you know, good playing some good teams on the road as well. That, that certainly that, that's part of it. Um, it's not something we're talking about or overly concerned with. I did hear that La Tech may have some fans there at this this game, so um, uh, we, we we know you know. What we have to do, you got to be real focused, locked in. If there's fans there, that, that creates just a little bit of a different element. Um, might be exciting for our guys. Who, who knows? But no, I don't think it's something we're concerned about. It's, it's, we know it's hard to win on the road. Uh, got to take care of the basketball, dig a little deeper, get more stops, uh, value possessions even more on the road. Coach, you're going to have uh, – will everybody be available for, uh, for, this, uh, for this series? Um, uh, Cedric? He was, he was better today. I uh, was able to get through most of practice today. He's still limping around a little bit, but um, uh, would anticipate that, you know, two days from now he'll be feeling even better. Looked like he made quite a bit of progress. I, I think he was close. Almost felt like he had a little setback during the week. I thought he was pretty close on Saturday. Uh, it looked good. looked pretty good in the pregame uh, warm-ups, and, and uh, 
I thought with a few more days, I clearly expected him to be fine by Friday. And again, today he got through a majority of practice. You know, you've looked pretty good, you know, with uh, Eric starting, uh, starting at, uh, at guard and you going with the three guards like that. Uh, you figure even if Cedric plays, you'll, uh, you'll still open with the way you have the past few games and bring Cedric off, or what do you think? Yeah, we'll see what happens the next couple of days of practice. We've still got guys, you know, fighting, trying to, trying to earn minutes. Um, yeah, we, we've, we've liked the lineup that we started the last couple of ball games. Um, we've tried to spend more time. Uh, there was a stretch there at one point in the season just trying to simplify things for all of our guys where we tried to have Parrish get all of his reps at the three and Cedric get all of his reps at the four uh, just so we could be more uh, clean with our actions, execute better. Um, and it's just a little bit harder to, to, to learn both spots. But that's kind of what we've had to do here with, with Parrish the last two weeks is, is make sure he's comfortable at both positions. But, yeah, both those lineups are fine. Again, the four spot is a position that we're, we've are we got good depth. We can go a lot of different ways there. Lockie, Lockie didn't, didn't play very well uh, on Saturday, but we did, doesn't mean we've lost our confidence in him. We, we love what he brings to the table for us, uh, energy and, and, and uh, good, simple plays. Guys like playing with him. So Lockie can get those minutes. Phoenix can play some four. Adrian Rodriguez continues to do a great job. So um, – it's not, it's not a huge position that, that, that we're overly concerned about. We'd love to be at full strength. And if, uh, if we are, then we would have to make that decision, go with the same starting lineup, get Cedric in there early probably. Yeah, I well, also wanted to ask you about Jordan, uh, Coach. You know, uh, the, the second game you played over at Rice, I think I've got, I've got it. He had his uh, season high in points of the last Rice game. And then uh, uh, this, this past game, he got his season, uh, season high in minutes, minutes played. You know, is that uh, – do you see him sort of uh, – uh, is he blossoming right now, would you say, or what's going on with Jordan? Yeah, we've been, been pretty happy with him all year. We've liked what he's done. Um, with, with Cedric being out and Parrish sliding off, off some of those guard minutes, it just opened up uh, some more minutes for Juice. That was kind of the way that, that worked. Um, and so, so I wasn't surprised that, that, that we got him in there a little bit more. Um, Parrish had one of his best games of the year. Well, not one of. He had his best game of the year defensively uh, in the second game against North Texas. You know, I think after the game we talked about Phoenix and what he did, and Keaton, Garden Hamlet, Zumbel was really good. But Eric Parrish, we went back, back and watched the film. He was really, really active and helping. Uh, he was guarding Bell and, and, and was just doing a nice job of, of helping off of him and challenging shots and switching on to Hamlet without totally – losing Bell because Bell was a threat too. Um, and so it was kind of ironic that at the end of that ball game, we, we, we didn't have Parrish in the game and it wasn't really anything intentional. We just felt good about the real, real small lineup, which, which included juice in there with our, with those other three guards, Jordan with the three guards. So um, it was, it was a, it was a little versatility, gave us a little different look. North Texas had gone so small at that point late in the game that we needed to kind of match that, but um, it, it wasn't anything, uh, the, the parish did wrong or right. It wasn't anything. It just just felt good about Juice in there, and he, he's making good plays. He 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 he's active on the ball. You know, he gets after it. He plays plays pretty hard. Still working on some of the, the technique on the backside in terms of the, the talking and load loading and and those things. But uh, uh, he really moves the ball offensively. Um, even though he's not shooting a good percentage at all from the three, guys close out on him. He he can make make uh, uh, plays off of penetration. So. Juice has been doing a good job. He told us uh, he grew up, uh, he, he was played against a bunch of uh, older guys. He told us when he was 11 years old, he was playing with guys that were about 18 out there on the playground. He sort of looks a lot, kind of like that, uh, Coach, like he's kind of fearless out there, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. He's got, got that right level of, of confidence, swag. Um, but, but, again, we talk about – he respects Javon and Keaton. He tries to get after him in practice every day. He usually matched up with one of those two guys and, and fights and competes. Um, he's got a great deal of confidence. He just plays, you know, and and uh, it's kind of refreshing. He, just, he, he, he reads reads situations pretty well. Uh, his instincts offensive or, offensively are very, very good. Defensively, he's conscientious. He's trying to learn our schemes and trying to work on his habits. So, uh, he's fun. He's fun in practice. Uh, we had practice – prior to the North Texas game that didn't even realize at the end of, end of our offensive segment, he, he rattled off 10 straight, two threes and two twos, just, just like it was nothing. Right. Um, and you just, 
doesn't really even phase us that he does that because he's, he's such a natural scorer. All right. Anything else for Steve? That's, uh, that'll, get, that'll get it, Coach. Appreciate it. All right. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. Thanks. Good luck. Appreciate it.